Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In today's video, we're continuing our journey through the New Testament with 25 memorable questions from the book of Luke, part two. These thought-provoking questions are designed to challenge your knowledge and deepen your understanding of this sacred gospel. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to stay updated with more inspiring biblical content. We'd love to hear from you. Share your scores and suggestions in the comments below. Ready to dive into the teachings of Luke? Let's get started. Question 1. What does not work or make clothes, yet is more beautiful than King Solomon in all his glory according to the book of Luke? A. Birds B. Trees C. Grass D. Flowers You get 10 seconds. That's D. Flowers in Luke chapter 12, verse 27, Jesus highlights the beauty of the lilies, which neither toil nor spin, yet are adorned more splendidly than even King Solomon in all his glory. This comparison emphasizes God's provision and care for all creation, encouraging believers to trust in Him rather than worry about material needs. The lilies serve as a powerful reminder of the beauty and value found in God's creation, even without human effort. Question 2. According to Luke, what will be where your treasure is? A. Your soul. B. Your heart. C. Your spirit. D. Your mind. You get 10 seconds. That's B, your heart. This profound statement urges believers to store their treasures in heaven, focusing on spiritual values rather than earthly possessions. The verse speaks to the alignment between what we value and where our deepest affections lie, reminding us that true security and fulfillment come from prioritizing God's kingdom above all else. Luke chapter 12, verse 34. Question 3. Who will come at an hour you are not expecting? A. The devil. B. The persecutor. C. The son of man. D. The tax collector. You get 10 seconds. That's C, the Son of Man. In Luke chapter 12, verse 40, Jesus teaches that the Son of Man will return at an unexpected hour. This serves as a reminder for believers to live in a state of readiness, faithfully following God's will, as the timing of His return is unknown. The message encourages vigilance and preparation for the final judgment. Question 4. Where did Jesus say to strive to enter? A. The city B. The temple C. The wide gate D. The narrow door You get 10 seconds. That's D, the narrow door. In Luke chapter 13, verse 24, Jesus urges believers to strive to enter through the narrow door. This signifies the challenging journey of faith and salvation, which requires dedication and perseverance. The narrow door represents the true path to eternal life, 
accessible to those who wholeheartedly follow Jesus' teachings. Question 5. What did Jesus ask the Pharisees if they would rescue from a pit on the Sabbath? A. An ox. B. A child. C. A sheep. D. A donkey. You get 10 seconds. That's A, an ox. In Luke chapter 14, verse 5, Jesus challenges the Pharisees by asking if they would rescue an ox or a son from a pit on the Sabbath. His question reveals the need for compassion over strict rule following, emphasizing that mercy and kindness should not be neglected, even on holy days. Esteemed pal, stay in the know and never miss a quiz again. Hit subscribe and be the first to catch all the excitement. Question 6. What will happen to the one who humbles himself according to Jesus? A. He will be exalted. B. He will be ignored. C. He will be forgotten. D. He will be punished. You get 10 seconds. That's A, he will be exalted. In Luke chapter 14, verse 11, Jesus teaches that he who humbles himself will be exalted. This highlights a core kingdom principle. Humility leads to honor in God's eyes. Jesus encourages believers to adopt a posture of humility, trusting that God will lift them up in due time, reversing worldly expectations of pride and power. Question 7. What did Jesus say a person must carry to be his disciple? A. A sword. B. A cross. C. A burden. D. A shield. You get 10 seconds. That's B, a cross. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus states that anyone who wants to be his disciple must carry their cross and follow him. This symbolizes the need for self-denial, sacrifice, and total commitment to Christ. Being a disciple requires prioritizing Jesus above personal comfort and worldly desires, embracing the cost of discipleship. Question eight. What is no longer useful for the land or the dung hill if it loses its flavor? A. Salt B. Grain C. Wine D. Water You get 10 seconds. That's A, salt. In Luke chapter 14, verses 34 to 35, Jesus says that salt, once it loses its flavor, is no longer useful for the land or the dung hill. The salt here represents the influence of believers. If they lose their distinctiveness and effectiveness, they fail to fulfill their purpose in God's kingdom, becoming spiritually ineffective. Question 9. What causes joy in heaven? A. An angel singing. B. A rich man giving money. C. A sinner who repents. D. A righteous man doing good. You get 10 seconds.
That's C, a sinner who repents. In Luke chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus reveals that there is great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. This statement underscores the immense value of repentance in God's eyes, showing that each act of turning back to God is celebrated in heaven as it reflects God's redemptive love for humanity. Question 10. In the parable, what job did the younger son take after wasting his inheritance? A. Fishing B. Feeding pigs C. Tending sheep D. Gathering crops. You get 10 seconds. That's B. Feeding pigs. In Luke chapter 15, verse 15, after squandering his inheritance, the younger son in the parable of the prodigal son took a job feeding pigs. This symbolizes his fall from privilege to desperation, highlighting the consequences of his poor choices. The son's experience reflects the theme of repentance and restoration upon returning to the father. Question 11. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for what to fail. A. A righteous man B. A prophecy C. A promise D. God's law You get 10 seconds. That's D. God's law. In Luke chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus teaches that it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for God's law to fail. This emphasizes the eternal, unchanging nature of God's word and commandments, underscoring the importance of faithfully adhering to divine teachings, which stand firm above all. Question 12. What was the name of the beggar who lay at the rich man's gate? A. Levi B. Simon C. Lazarus D. Matthew You get 10 seconds. That's C, Lazarus. In Luke chapter 16, verse 20, the beggar's name is given as Lazarus, who lay at the rich man's gate covered in sores and longing for scraps of food. His story contrasts his humble suffering with the rich man's luxury, leading to a reversal of fortunes in the afterlife, highlighting themes of justice and divine mercy. Question 13. Where was the beggar carried when he died? A. To heaven B. To the temple C. To Abraham's side D. To the rich man's house You get 10 seconds. That's C, to Abraham's side. In Luke chapter 16, verse 22, when Lazarus the beggar died, he was carried by angels to Abraham's side. This symbolizes his reward in the afterlife, where he finds comfort and rest. The parable contrasts Lazarus' eternal blessing with the rich man's torment, reflecting the ultimate reversal of their earthly conditions. Question 14. How many of the ten lepers Jesus healed came back and gave thanks? A. 1 B. 2 C. 3 D. 4 You get 10 seconds.
That's A. 1. Luke chapter 17 verses 15 to 16. Out of the ten lepers that Jesus healed, only one returned to give thanks. This man, a Samaritan, fell at Jesus' feet in gratitude. His act highlights the importance of recognizing God's mercy and expressing gratitude, with Jesus emphasizing how rare true thankfulness can be. Question 15. Who stood in the temple and prayed, telling God about the good things he had done? A. The priest. B. The Pharisee. C. The disciple. D. The tax collector. You get 10 seconds. That's B, the Pharisee. In Luke chapter 18, verse 11, the Pharisee stood in the temple and prayed, boasting about his good deeds. He compared himself favorably to others, revealing a self-righteous attitude. This contrasts with the humility of the tax collector, emphasizing Jesus' teaching that those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Question 16. What is easier for a camel to go through than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? A. A door. B. A gate. C. The desert. D. A needle's eye. You get 10 seconds. That's D, a needle's eye. In Luke chapter 18, verse 25, Jesus says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. This hyperbolic statement underscores the difficulty of detaching from wealth and the necessity of divine grace for salvation, challenging worldly attachments. Question 17. What did the disciples place on the path in front of Jesus when he rode on the colt? A. Stones B. Flowers C. Their cloaks D. Palm branches You get 10 seconds. That's C, their cloaks. In Luke chapter 19, verses 35 to 36, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a colt, the disciples placed their cloaks on the path before him. This act was a gesture of honor and respect, symbolizing their recognition of Jesus as the promised king. The scene marks the triumphal entry, fulfilling the prophecy of the Messiah's arrival. Question 18. What did Jesus say would cry out if his disciples were silent? A. The stars. B. The winds. C. The clouds. D. The stones. You get 10 seconds. That's D, the stones. In Luke chapter 19, verse 40, Jesus declared that if his disciples were silent, the stones would cry out. This statement underscores the inevitability of praising Jesus as the Messiah. It highlights the unstoppable nature of divine truth and worship, as even creation itself would bear witness to his kingship. Question 19. Jesus said, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer, but what had the people turned it into? A. A den of robbers. B. A meeting place. 
C, a courtroom. D, a market. You get 10 seconds. And That's A, a den of robbers. In Luke chapter 19, verse 46, Jesus rebukes the people saying they had turned the temple into a den of robbers. This occurs when Jesus clears the temple of the money changers, expressing his anger over their exploitation of the sacred space. His words emphasize the temple's intended purpose for worship and prayer, not commerce and corruption. Question 20. In the parable, what did the husbandmen do to the Lord of the vineyard's son? A. Paid him. B. Killed him. C. Ignored him. D. Welcomed him. You get 10 seconds. That's B, killed him. In Luke chapter 20, verses 14 to 15, in the parable of the wicked tenants, the husbandmen, tenants, killed the Lord's son. This parable symbolizes the rejection of God's messengers and ultimately his son, Jesus. It serves as a warning of judgment for those who reject God's grace and misuse the blessings entrusted to them. Stay with us until the end of the video to see how many Bible quiz questions you got right. Don't forget to note your score and share it with us in the comments section. Let's explore and learn more about the Bible with these fun and interesting questions. Question 21. What did the stone that the builders rejected become? A. A wall. B. A pebble. C, a foundation. D, a cornerstone. You get 10 seconds. That's D, a cornerstone. In Luke chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus says, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is a reference to Psalm chapter 118, verse 22, symbolizing Jesus himself, who was rejected by the religious leaders, yet became the foundation of God's redemptive plan. It signifies his crucial role in salvation despite being despised by many. Question 22. Whose image was on the coin that Jesus asked to be shown to him? A. Herod B. Pilate C. Caesar D. Pharaoh You get 10 seconds. That's C, Caesar. In Luke chapter 20, verse 24, when asked about paying taxes, Jesus asked for a coin and pointed out that Caesar's image was on it. He used this moment to teach about rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's, emphasizing the distinction between earthly authority and divine obligation. Question 23. What did the Sadducees deny? A. Angels B. The Resurrection C. The Sabbath D. The Law of Moses You get 10 seconds. That's B, the resurrection. In Luke chapter 20, verse 27, 
it is noted that the Sadducees denied the resurrection. They were a group of Jewish leaders who only accepted the first five books of the Old Testament and rejected beliefs in the resurrection, angels, and spirits. This made them distinct from the Pharisees and shaped their theological debates with Jesus. Question 24. What did Jesus say not to be terrified of when you hear about it? A. Storms B. Famine C. Earthquakes D. Wars and uprisings You get 10 seconds. That's D, wars and uprisings. Jesus said not to be terrified when you hear of wars and uprisings, Luke chapter 21, verse 9. He warns that such events must happen but are not signs of the immediate end. His message encourages believers to remain calm and trust in God's ultimate plan, even in the face of troubling world events. Question 25. According to Luke, what will not pass away? A. Jesus' words B. The temple C. The sun and moon D. Heaven and earth You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jesus' words. Jesus declares, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This emphasizes the eternal and unchanging nature of Jesus' teachings. While the physical world is temporary, God's word remains steadfast and enduring, providing an unshakable foundation for believers. Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Oh, wow! Congratulations on completing this exciting quiz from the book of Luke, part two. How did you do? Whether you got every question right or learned something new, remember that every step brings us closer to understanding the teachings of the New Testament. If you enjoyed this quiz, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. Let's spread the joy of learning the scriptures. Don't forget to subscribe for more quizzes and deeper biblical insights. Thanks for joining us today. May your journey through the word be filled with wisdom and blessings. See you in the next video.